Hello, I'm Reverend Scott Whipperman, pastor here at First Presbyterian Church in Helena, Montana, and we welcome you to our worship service today. I'd like you to know that regardless of who you are or where you are in your journey of faith, you're welcome here at First Presbyterian Church. Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of John in the first chapter. Last week we heard about the baptism of Jesus Christ through the story in Matthew. In John here we pick up what happened just after that baptism. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him, and I myself did not know him. But the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and I will show you. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, We have found the Messiah, that is, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which, when translated, is Peter. 
The word of the Lord. Mrs. Klein had always loved art, and so she had volunteered as a docent at the local library, or the art, I mean museum. She had volunteered as a docent for decades at the, library, at the museum, and had shown all the pieces in that museum to many different groups that had come through. And there's one particular statue that she had walked by countless times and explained to numbers of people. But on this particular day, a tour of blind people were coming to the museum. And as they were going along, a few of the people were invited to feel this one particular sculpture. And a young girl ran her hands down the figure of this woman and then said, she's pregnant. And Mrs. Klein looked at the statue and said, yes, she does look pregnant. <clears throat> she had seen this statue countless times and had not noticed the woman's pregnancy before. Yet this blind young girl was the one who showed her, opened her eyes to the fact that this statue was of a pregnant woman. Isaiah. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah has two halves to it. The first half is called the judgment half. It is Isaiah speaking to the Israelites in Jerusalem while they are still in Jerusalem before their fall to Babylon and the exile. And he is speaking words of judgment to them. That they are not doing right according to God. And the second half of Isaiah is called comfort because the people are now in exile and Isaiah is speaking words of comfort to these people who are in exile. But we heard him claim that God called him before he was born to be a prophet, equipped him with a tongue of sharp steel and polished him like arrows And though he was a prophet, though he was equipped, you can imagine that a prophet bringing news of judgment may not be particularly well received. People might have seen Isaiah, but they might have missed that he was a prophet, that he was called by God to do this. When I was in Texas, in Austin, there was a pastor who had gone through a lot of additional training and was a certified counselor. And so you could go and get Christian counseling from this pastor. And he told a story that uh, in his life, at one point in time, he was going through somewhat of a difficult time. There was crossroads that he needed to make choices as to which ways to go, and these weren't easy choices. So to help decide, he went off to New Mexico and went out hiking into the wilderness, thinking about these paths, which path he might follow, what he should do. And he found this precipice and sat down on the edge of it, overlooking this great vista. And he was contemplating there for a while, and suddenly he noticed he wasn't alone. There was an oh, older, middle-aged Indian woman that was there with him. And while this might be unusual in some parts of the country, in New Mexico, like here in Montana, running across an Indian person would not be unexpected. But this Indian woman, who looked poor and probably of the local rural area and probably not very well educated, came and sat down and spoke with him. She asked what he was doing out here. Ultimately, he kind of opened up some of the crossroads, some of the challenges, the problems that he was facing. And they talked. 
and she gave him some words of advice, which she thought were incredibly insightful for a woman in, into his particular situation, being this city dweller back in some big city, for this woman that was living in a very rural, impoverished uh, environment. And they spoke for quite a while. He shared his snacks with her that he brought along. And ultimately she said that she had to go and he thanked her for spending time with them and her words, her words of wisdom. And she got up and left and he sat there for a bit longer watching over the vista, contemplating these things that he'd heard from this woman. And finally it was time for him to head back to the afternoon was waning on. And so he got up and left. And as he was walking back, it dawned on him that this Indian woman was an angel, that he'd been in the presence of an angel and had not recognized it at the time. John the Baptist. This is an interesting story in, in uh, John here because John the Baptist twice says that he didn't know who Jesus Christ was. Now they're cousins, remember? Now granted, they lived some distance apart and travel was much more difficult back in that time, so maybe they didn't see each other much. But you think that John the Baptist might have heard some stories about this visit from Mary to his mother before he was born and things that were said. So what's not entirely clear from the text is when John says, I didn't know him, is John saying, I didn't recognize him, I didn't know who he was? Or is John saying, I didn't know that this was the Messiah? We're not entirely clear which of those. But John then does see who was in front of him when he's baptizing Jesus in the river. Jesus is just another person, but then he sees the dove coming down upon him and remembers that this is the sign God spoke of, of the one who will be the Messiah. And so his eyes were opened. Andrew. Andrew Here's John the Baptist calling Jesus the Lamb of God. Now Andrew is a disciple of John the Baptist. John the Baptist had a good following of disciples. And Andrew and one of the other disciples decide to follow Jesus and see where he's going, see where he's staying. But in the course of an afternoon, Andrew comes to see that this is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Christ. And so he runs off and gets his brother. And his brother comes, brings him back and says, we found the Messiah, you've got to see this. And he brings his brother back, which is right in front of us, that we may be oblivious to. Where is Jesus, Jesus hidden in plain sight in our life? <clears throat> What is the next faithful thing that God is calling us to do? Is it something that makes logical sense? Possibly. Or is it something that seems futile or appears to defy logic? Will we follow? So email me. Call me. Let's go out and have coffee. And tell me how this process of learning to discern what that in front of you is going. How are you working on being able to see the things that we should be able to see but are blocked by our assumptions and perceptions? Share with me then when you've gotten better at this. What are those things that you've seen that are right in front of you. The one that might have been there all along that you never saw. Tell me about it.
do that? 